Okay, so today we're going to be doing a Z690 versus Z790 DDR4 overclocking comparison. Now, what is the difference between Z690 and Z790? Well, if you go onto the Intel spec sheets, the only thing that's really different between them is the chipset gets a few more PCIe Gen 4 lanes going from it. So for the most part, no users would notice, right? Now, even knowing this, I have gotten questions from the community asking, does it improve overclocking at all? And I was saying for the longest time that 99% chance, probably not, most likely not, right? But we're gonna test it out anyway. I actually ended up buying a Z790 board. So these are our two test subjects for today. The first one, you're all probably familiar with this one. This is the Z690 Strix-A DDR4 model. Now this one is the Z790 Strix-A DDR4 model. Can you tell the difference? Probably not. In fact, in my opinion, the Z690 Strix A actually looks a lot uh, more aesthetically pleasing than the Z790 model. But why did I buy the Z790 model? One reason, one reason only. I will be upgrading my workstation to a 13900K and the only difference between these two motherboards, this one, has an extra PCI Express slot. Now, if you actually look at the I.O. on these two motherboards, they are basically identical, down to every single last port. The VRM power stages are the same, the CPU compatibility is the same, Everything is literally the same on these two motherboards, except for that one PCI Express slot. Now, let's say you don't need that extra PCI Express slot, you're just a gamer, you're not planning on using those extra slots for anything. Should you spring the extra money for the Z790 model? Well, that's what we're gonna find out. So the plan for today, we're gonna take both of these motherboards, and I'm going to try to see how far DDR4 will go on them. We'll test 2x16 dual rank and 4x8 dual rank. Um, just to see if maybe the topology changed at all on Z790, if it can go further with 4x8. I'm not sure, we're not sure. For CPU overclocking, they'll be identical. That's not dependent on the motherboard. Um, providing the VRM is good enough, but they're both the same on these boards, right? We will be doing a DDR5 comparison as well between Z690 and Z790. Make sure you subscribe to that to see the videos coming up in the future. And as always, all products on this channel are supporter backed and supporter purchased, no product samples. So all reviews to you guys are maintained with the highest journalistic integrity. So without further ado, let's go see if there is any performance benefit to going with a Z790 DDR4 motherboard. Okay, so we're gonna start with the Z690 Strix and then we'll start with uh, 4x8 here. So all we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna go manual. What I'm actually gonna do here is I'm gonna manually set the timings to 19 because we are not focused on timings today. We are focused on maximum frequency, right? The goal is to check maximum frequency and the topologies of both of these boards. So then what I will do is I'll start at 4,000. They should all work at 4,000, I'm assuming. And then I'm gonna go up one at a time until it stops posting, right? And then when it stops posting, I'm gonna back off one and then try to validate it in Windows. And then if that works, great. If it doesn't, back it off again. And then I'll repeat this process for all of the configurations. Okay, so first up, it looks like we settled on 4200 for four by eight. Now, OCCT stress test isn't the best stress test by any means whatsoever, but um, it's good enough for the purposes of this video because when I did 4266, it would error out within 10, 20 seconds, right? So that's what I've noticed. Horribly unstable, mostly stable. So we're just going to go with 42, but in actuality, like if you were doing a really hard stress test, it might end up being like 4133, but it doesn't matter for the purposes of this video. We're going to go five minutes on memory on OCCT. If that works... We're gonna write it down. So four by eight, Z690, 
4200 so let's go do let's go we're gonna use this um 4400 kit of b die that i got we're gonna use that next and then we're gonna see if we can go any higher yeah so it looks like i can't even go a single bin higher here right we're at 4266 that's only one bin more than 4200 and it will error out here in like 20 seconds or whatever right which is unfortunate yeah see right away um yeah so i mean i guess the 2 by 16 didn't really didn't really help at all we landed at 4200 again with the uh 2 by 16 kit um usually you can get about one or two bins more with the 2x16 but it doesn't seem to be the case with this cpu that i'm using here and this motherboard so uh i, I actually i got it to um i got it to actually post at 4400 not stable 4300 not stable and then i did 4266 aired out right away and then i did 4200 and this one seems to be fine so yeah that's that's i didn't expect that but um yeah i mean whatever so let's move on to z790 right and then we got to take this cpu and put it in the other motherboard because you have to use the same cpu because of memory controller variances right so i'm gonna go do that and we'll be back one eternity later okay so now we're on the z790 motherboard we're doing four by eight first uh, the SP score shows the exact same between both motherboards. So at least you know if you're on a Z690, um, your silicon quality isn't going to be changing here. So it's all the exact same. I got the latest BIOS flashed on this thing. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to punch in all of the exact same voltages that I had. We're going to do the same thing, 4,000. And then we're going to step it up, right? And then we're going to see... That's new. That wasn't on the other motherboard. Oh, that's weird. Um, yeah, we're going to see where it caps out. So it actually looks like this one is worse. This one actually errors out at 4,219. Now, that is not to say that it was stable on the other one. It's just that it's erroring out faster on this one, right? So this one actually might be... 4133 so anyway let's see right there yeah all right 4219 so moral of the story here uh it looks like it makes no difference at all with at least with four by eight right so we'll do uh 4200 error let's go try 4133 just to confirm that the voltages aren't different at all but if it works at 4133 then yeah it really doesn't matter okay so yeah it looks like 4133 seems to work just fine it's not erroring out so all that tells me is that this 4200 probably was not stable right so 4133 with a check and let's do 2 by 16 before we call it, but I'm just going to go ahead and assume that the Z690 versus the Z790 argument is probably a wash, but we'll go ahead and do it anyway. Okay, we're on 2 by 16 now, and would you look at that? So it looks like we actually got one bin up. We're at 4266. Now... I, I think personally that's more about just binning the actual motherboard itself rather than the Z790 part of it. So what I mean by that is sometimes you'll get motherboards where these two slots here kind of have crappy memory traces, but the primary ones have good memory traces, right? That happens all the time. That's why uh, extreme overclockers actually bin motherboards themselves because sometimes you get lemons and sometimes you get good ones, right? But for the most part... This is pretty much within like spec or margin of error, right? Going up or down one or two bins, right? But let's go try 4300 anyway, just for, just for funsies. Nah, yeah, no dice. 4300 errored out in 15 seconds. So yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it, it's all within margin of error, error here, right? Or um, basically luck on how the board trains if you want. So 42... 66 so it does not matter if you buy z790 or z690 when it comes to ddr4 memory overclocking
So when choosing Z690 versus Z790, what you're looking for is price and features. How many PCI Express slots do you need? How many USB slots? USB Type-C, Thunderbolt, network adapter speed, Wi-Fi. That's the stuff you wanna be looking for. In terms of actual performance of the platform, they're both the same. Now, if you do choose a Z690 board and you buy a 13th gen CPU, make sure the board does have BIOS flashback. Most of them do nowadays, but double check. Last thing you wanna do is buy a 13th gen CPU on Z690 and not have it able to boot up. Oh, also reason number three, pick the one that most aesthetically fits your build. Anyway guys, I hope you learned something. If you like the content, hit that subscribe button, do all that YouTube SEO stuff, like, share, subscribe, comment down below what you thought of Z690 versus Z790 DDR4 overclocking. And I will see you guys in the next one. Talk to you later.